couple questions from the homework that I want to go over. Uh, so some people are having trouble with um, writing the equations that the, the homework questions were asking. Uh, so I want to go over a couple examples of that and hopefully give you um, some alternative ways or, or methods for creating an equation. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, additional or different. Or, so here we've got, um, hopefully you've seen it. If you haven't seen it, you haven't opened up the assignment yet. Uh, the, the questions are very similar to the structure that I gave you yesterday. Um, at least early on, there's a couple questions towards the end that are a little bit different, but uh, we'll talk about one of those as well. Uh, but the, they give you a chart, okay, and they ask you, in this case, number of triangles. Uh, this here will be the perimeter. And then this will here will be your ordered pairs, okay? Huh? Uh, this is so it's, I just cut this out from your homework, so you guys don't have it on your uh, on your sheet. Uh, but would you guys agree that you've got a situation where you've got uh, one triangle, you've got a situation with two triangles, and you got a situation with three triangles? Is that okay, everybody. Now ask us to find the perimeter. Is the perimeter does that depend on how many triangles you have? Is your, is, your, is your perimeter larger when you have more triangles? Yes. yes. So the, the size of your perimeter is dependent on how many triangles you have. Okay. So I think maybe we, we can kind of do this. I'll do it the most simplistic way. If I wanted to find the perimeter of this triangle right here, how would you do that? Add them all up, right? So I'm going to write 5 plus 5 plus 6. And that's going to give you 16, right? Okay. Now, what about number two? What about triangles with, with two? Uh, or the picture of two triangles? How many fives you got there? Two, so you have five plus five plus six plus six. Okay. So I'm always going to have two sides because the way this is set up uh, is that they keep putting together, like that matching side right there is that side of five, right? Does that kind of make sense? So it gets closed off and doesn't become a side for my perimeter. Uh, but I will always be left with two fives. So this will be five plus five. But now how many sixes do you have? Three. Six plus six plus six, right? Now, you don't have this picture, but if you drew another one here, don't you bring in another six? And then you have a five right there. Does that make sense? So if I had a four here, You'd have the five plus five, but how many sixes would you have? Four sixes. Okay. What if I let's say that just just give me um, just humor me here. If we had if we had a hundred triangles, how many fives would you have? Two fives. How many sixes would you have? You would have a hundred sixes. So here's the thing. What pattern are you seeing? You're seeing that the number of sixes you have is equivalent to the number of triangles. Okay? So here we've got two sixes that gives you two triangles. Here you've got three sixes that came from three triangles. Here you've got four sixes, four triangles, right? So when I write an equation, when I go y equals, so y, remember that's your perimeter, right? Your perimeter is what is always going to be there? No matter what, I'm going to have 5 plus 5, right? Okay, so 5 plus 5. And then now plus, how do I tell how many sixes? I got sixes, but the amount of sixes that I have changes, right? So this would be, would you agree I call that 6 times 1? Can that be 6 times 2? Can that be 6 times 3? Can that be 6 times 4? This would be 6 times 100, right? So what if this number was unknown? What if it was X? It would be 6 times 6 times X. So now do we see that our equation can be rewritten that way? Y equals 10 plus 6x. I get confused on like the part where it says, like it goes in words. Okay, so it goes, so in words, and I, I'm not going to ever ask this because I think it's a very terrible question that they're asking the way they word it. Yeah, it's like remember. But what they're, what they're saying there is that you're going to take the number of triangles that you have, multiply it by 6, okay? 
Um, and then that's going to tell you that they, they talk about how you'll always have like two sides of these triangles exposed to at the perimeter. Um, so uh, the next, so they'll say something to the effect that each triangle is going to have at least one exposed side or something like that. Um, and then at the end it says now because of that, this this side here a five and that side there a five is always going to be um, exposed as a amount for the perimeter. So here we get five and five, right? If we make four, uh, or sorry, uh, five triangles, you'll have a five and a five. Six triangles, there'll be a five and a five. So no matter what, you're going to have kind of these two here being five and five, five and five. By that, more triangles have five and five on the edges. Does that kind of make sense? And five plus five is always ten. So that's it's kind of walking you through that progression. I, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to ask you that. Um, okay, so the so, so let, let's actually let's address this a little bit um, differently. Uh, because if I do this, I go, let's rewrite this table. So my X's were 1, 2, 3, and 4. My perimeters or my Y's would have been, so 16. Uh, this would have been, what, 22? Uh, and then 28? And then 34? Okay, so here's my question. This is how, without, without this column right here, Without writing the expressions, we should still be able to come up with an equation from this. Because what happens towards the end of the assignment, you get a question that just gives you this chart. There's no picture. There's nothing that you can see that how they got these y's, and they ask you to write an equation. So let's try to see how we can do that. The first thing you want to do is to see how your x's are changing. I go from 1 to 2. That's adding 1, right? Is 2 to 3 adding 1? Is 3 to 4 adding 1? Okay. So right now, I'm not going to get into details of, of how you do this when they're increasing by 2 or 3 or 4. It's a very similar process, but it's got one extra step involved in it. Um, but if they're all increasing by 1, so right now, most of your questions are going to be like that, if not all of them. Now we have to say, okay, if that is showing a pattern, which is that's a very trivial pattern, but yet still a pattern, we're going to look over here and see how do these change. So that changes by plus, oh, plus six, right? How do these change? Plus six. How do these change? Plus six. Okay. Now, think about what we've already done. Where do you think that six shows up in that equation? It's the X. So this, this is called our common difference, right? Common difference. Inside your formulas, inside your equations, that is the multiplier for your x, okay? So what this does, think about this. If I had x equaling 1, okay, plus my 10 will give me 16. So that's showing just one amount of 16. But if I look at those two together, how many, how many 6s do you have there? You have 2, so that's a total of 12, right? Well, that total of 12 comes from when x is 2. If I look at all 3... How many do I have there? I've got 18, right? Three sixes is 18, and that comes from that amount of three. Does that make sense? So the amount of sixes that I'm adding to go from this one to that one, and then this one to that one, and then that one to that one, is done by uh, that multiple of six. So how do we find that again? We look at the common difference. The common difference, the common difference is your coefficient for your x. Okay. Now here's my question. What do I need to do if I could, because this rule, and somebody in the last class had issue with this, but so I want to make sure we, we explain this pretty well. This rule, okay, which tells me how do I go from an X value to a Y value, it should take that number and change it into that number. Does that make sense? It should take that number and change it into that one. It should take that number and change it into that one, and so forth. Now, if I do that, if I put a 1 in, so right here, does it change it into 16? No, what's, what's 6 times 1 give me? 6. What do I need to do to that 6 to get to 16? You would add 10, wouldn't you? Does that make sense? Now, now that I've got that, I think that's my rule, I'm going to see if that works for 2. If I plug 2 in, what's 6 times 2? 12. If I add 10 to 12, does that get me to 22? Yes. Put 3 in, what's 6 times 3? 18. Add 10 to it. Does it get me to 28? 
If I choose 4, 6 times 4, 24, add 10 to it. They give me a 34. Does that kind of make sense on how, how you can do that? All right. So now the, and that's, I, I think, where we're going to see in this hexagon one, um, at least the example that I've, I have here, um, that process being necessary. Because I, I think if you've got, like, threes, I, I saw somebody have distances of threes on their homework. Uh, it's a little bit easier. But since they're all ones, it's kind of hard. Um, but if I've got my number of hexagons, And then I've got my perimeter, and then we'll have our ordered pairs here. Uh, so a hexagon, if I've got a number, I've got one hexagon in this picture, I've got two in the middle one, and I've got three, right? Okay. Now, when I look at the perimeter here, is that perimeter going to be six? Okay. Now, if I come across here, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is that perimeter going to be 10? If I come over here, that's my first one, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Would you agree that perimeter is 14? Okay. Now the question is, well, what is the equation? Well, if I look at over here, because we had this, like, algebra written out here, if I would do that over here, Okay, it would look like this. This row here would be 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. This one's going to be the same thing, but plus four more ones. And I'm not going to be able to really see a much of a pattern. Does that make sense? So here's the question. Are these increasing by 1 each time? Okay. So what are these increasing by? 4. So what is the common difference? 4. So when I write my equations, y equals... At least 4x, right? That's the start of my rule. But remember, that rule should take this 1 and change it into one number? 6. When I plug 1 in right here, does it change that into 6? What do I get when I plug 1 in there? 4. But I want it to be 6, so what do I do that 4 to make it 6? Add 2 to it. Okay. Now I want to make sure when, I, when, I, when I'm finished with that, I want to come down to 2 and plug 2 in right there. What's 4 times 2? 8. If I add 2 to it, does it get me to 10? And then do the same thing with 3. What's 4 times 3? 12. Add 2 to it. What do I get? 14. Does that kind of make sense on how to do that? All right. Now, why am I adding 2 each time? It's because, so the 4x, here's, here's kind of think about what the 4x does. If I look at this, picture right here. Would you agree that that side, that side, that one, that one, that one, and that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one, are they exposed, are those exposed for perimeter? Okay, so how many do you have there? You have 12, which is four for each one of those figures, right? Okay. So where's the 4 in our equation? It's the 4 times the x, where x was 3 in this case. Does that make sense? So that's where we get 12. Okay. Now, y plus 2. Where's the plus 2 come at? Well, no matter how many of these things I put in the end like this, I'm going to have that segment right there and that segment there exposed. So those are, so you're always going to have two hexagons that have one extra side being added in for perimeter. Does that make sense? Okay. So if each one of those red distances is 1, then 1 plus 1 is 2. And that's the 2 that's in my equation. That's the plus 2 in my equation. Okay. Um, does that make sense? Okay. Um, so that's, that's how we go about that problem. Now, as we get further and further into this math, uh, and actually using this stuff for uh, practical purposes, we're going to collect data like this, and maybe I don't have the ability to actually see how that zero amount got changed into a 1, how the 1 got changed into a 9, and the 2 to 17, and 3 to 25. So we want to use the approach that we just had. Okay? Instead of using the pictures, let's just look at the relationships. Are these increasing by 1? Plus 1, 
plus 1, plus 1, right? Okay. What are these increasing by? 8. So plus 8, plus 8, plus 8. Is that okay there, everybody? So I write y equals, what, what am I going to write first? 8, x, okay? Now, here's the thing. If x is 0, if x is 0, what do you get for y? When you plug it into this rule right here, you get 0. What do we want it to become? 1. So what do I need to do to that? If, if I plug in and got 0 here, I need to plus 1 to that, right? Does that now give me, if I plug in 1 for x, does that give me 9? If I plug in 2 for x, does that give me 17? Okay. Now, what I just showed you is a strategy when you know that your x's are increasing by 1 every single time. Okay? If they're increasing by 2 every single time, or 3 or 4 or 5, there's a little bit of a different game we've got to play. And I'll, I'll kind of show you this real quick. Um, if we have 0, I'm going to use this. So we should develop the same equation. So I'm going to use the same set of points. Okay? If, if x was 4, and I hate the idea, if x was 4, this should give me a way of finding what the y is. Does that make sense? What would y be if x was 4? What's 4 times 8? 32 plus 1? 33. Uh, what if x was 6? What's 8 times 6? 48 plus 1? 49. Okay. So I'm going to take those pieces down. Let's take, um, let's go, um, I want to write this. Let's go x and y, but let's say x is 0, and it's got a y value of 1. Let's say x is 2, and give me a y value of 17. x is 4, give me a y value of 33, and x is 6, y value of 49. Does that make sense? So it's the same exact data that came from there, but I'm leaving some numbers out, right? I'm leaving the x value of 1 out, I'm leaving the x value of 3 out, um, and this is the reason why. I want you guys to tell me what is... Um, let's see here, where'd that cursor go? Hold on. There we go. What is the difference as I go from 0 to 2? Plus 2, right? What about 2 to 4? 2. 4 to 6? 2. Okay? So we had a common difference over in our x to the 2, right? It's still a pattern. Would you guys agree with that? Okay, what's the difference over here? 16. 16. 16, right? Okay, so here's my question. We got the information for this chart from y equals 8x plus 1, so we should end up with the same equation. If I use this common difference, the way that we were using it, we have 16x now. Does that make sense? Now, just, be, just bear with me here. If I plug, if I have y equals 16x, I plug 0 in. Does it give me 1? No. no. So what do I need to do with 16x? I need to add 1 to it. Okay. Now, if I put 2 in, 2 is going to get me, when I plug 2 in here, what do I get? 32. What's 32 plus 1? 33. I was supposed to get 17, right? Okay. What can I do to that 32? Think about this. Huh? I don't flip it, but, but think about this. When this, was, when this was 2, when I put 2 in right there, I got 32, right? Yeah. What can I do with that 32 that when I add 1 to it, I get 17? Divided, divided by what? 2. Because when I take 32 and divide it by 2, it gives me 16 plus my 1 would be 17. Now, why would I divide by 2? Where's the 2 coming? Okay, so the 2 that we're dividing by comes from that right there. So I'm going to divide my... 16x by 2, what's 16x divided by 2? 8, right? So, so when we do these, if you're, let's say that the x's were changing by 3, I would divide my coefficient of x by 3, right? If they were changing by 5, I would divide by 5, okay? Have you guys ever heard of slope? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is this is this is the idea of slope. We know that one over one as a slope is the same as two over two, right? Okay, and that's kind of what's going on here. We got to pay attention to that 
that logic. And we're going to get into that. That's what we're trying to learn right now, kind of get a, a, a broad foundation of how to write equations, how we use them to show real life applications, and then we'll, we'll invest a lot of time into that slope stuff. Okay. Uh, something I want to do just to finish up those notes, um, and then I'll set you free on finishing up that assignment. Um, these things right here, folks, these are synonyms. What does synonym mean? Okay, so these are words that mean the same thing, okay? Now, their, their use, as you work through mathematics, there might be a more appropriate time, depending on what we're working with, to call something X values. There might be then a more appropriate time, depending on what we're working on, instead of calling them X values, we might say, well, it's more appropriate to call them input values, okay? Uh, or it might be appropriate to, to call them domains instead. But what I need you to understand is that in that left-hand column, your independent variable, all your X values, which we can call X values, or we call them input values, or we call them domain values. They are simply your X's. Does that make sense? No. Okay. Um, the dependent variable then is your Y values. It's everything else. So if I know what, everything else is my X values, everything else would be Y values, right? So if my independent is X, my dependent has to be Y, okay? I've already used an input for my independent, right? So then this, the dependents have to be outputs, okay? So your Y values, your output, something called range, that's our Y values as well, our dependent variable. And then eventually we'll talk about this notation, F of X here means, I don't really worry too much about it right now, uh, but it's essentially your Y, okay? Um, have you guys ever heard the words domain and range before? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I need you to I need you to realize these. And I need you to commit those to memory because what's going to happen? Let's say, and of course, exam question one will say, "Here's your x values." Question two will say, "Here's your input values." Question three is going to say, "Now look at your domains." What do they say each single time? The three different questions, three different words. Are they talking about your independent variable? Are they talking just about your x? Just using, using different vocabulary to do it. Okay. So just be cautious of that. Be on the lookout for that. Those are. Those are words you want to link to one another, all right, because we want to get over that vocabulary bridge. We, we, don't want, we don't want that to be a roadblock to us being able to do the math, right? Okay? So we have to know the vocabulary to progress through the course. Um, okay. The next thing I want to show you here is um, a quick question with um, how they show tables. Most people, I think, like to see tables up and down, like you see them vertically, okay? It's really easy, and, and, and of course, exam, all types of tests, even Math Excel will do this. They'd like to structure this to see if you know how to do the math, you understand the terms, or you're trying to just follow a structure of tables. So, for instance, the, would you guys agree, and, and this is what we've been doing uh, in, in the questions before, we like to make a column of X's, we like to make a column of Y's, right? Okay. Remember, your X's are your input, right? Yeah. So we like to put our input there, and a Y is our output that goes with that X. So it would be 8 in this case. Does that make sense? Okay. So the ordered pair, X comma Y, would be 0, 8. Okay. With this chart, I see a lot of people doing this. They'll go like 0, 1. They'll go 2, 3, 8, 10, and 12, 14. Does that make sense? They pick... They, they, they pay absolutely no attention to that, okay? Um, I think most people like to write it this way because it's easy to just take these two things and merge them into an ordered pair like that horizontally, okay? So the next one would be 1 and 10, so merge those into 1 comma 10, right? Okay, does that make sense? Something I think that's beneficial for you guys to write down here is that your X comma Y is exactly the same thing as an input, comma, output, which is exactly the same thing as your independent variable, comma, the dependent variable, which is exactly the same thing as domain, comma, Range, guys, we've had this issue for the last couple of days where there's so many things that we do that is not conducive 
to us paying attention to what's going on. Lots of giggling, lots of watching other people doing things. Who's is it? Uh, so we've got those relationships. Every time I say X comma Y, those three other relationships should come to mind. Because now, let's say we go to a question like I've got here. It says input and output. Does it allow me to transfer right over to what X comma Y is? Okay. Because eventually, now I know I put them in here. So I want to be as detailed as possible for you. Eventually, that X and that Y won't be there. And they'll just say input, output. Or it might say domain range. It might say independent, dependent. It might say temperature and time, and you have to de determine which one of those is independent, which one of those is dependent. Um, and we, that, that is the vocabulary, that is the, um, the grammar aspect of the course that if we don't understand that, can't get beyond that, obviously there's no way that we're going to get to finding the, the mathematical information. Okay? Um, so just, just be on the lookout for that. They're going to structure your data in different ways. We need to make sure that we know how to take that data, read it, and, and put it in ordered pairs. Okay. Uh, the next thing I'm going to ask you here, just look at this graph real quick. And you guys know how to plot points, right? So we're going to plot these four points. Okay. Just be cautious. Math like Excel does this a lot. If I look at my x-axis, that's increasing by one, right? Increasing by one, increasing by one. So a lot of people see that and say, okay, well, every one grid line, every one of these little purple lines that's vertical represents a unit of one, right? So then they automatically say, well, then each one of these horizontal ones is going to increase increase by one, right? But what do we see there? They're increasing by twos, okay? So the scale of the x-axis and y-axis don't always have to be the same. Why is that important? Because when I ask you to plot these points and you say, okay, zero, two, I don't want you to go, okay, well, zero in the x-direction, so I stay right here on this axis, and then up two and put a point there, because that would actually be zero, four. So just be careful you're not counting the lines, but you're paying attention to the numbers. So zero, two, if I go 1, 4, that would be there, right? Uh, 3, 5. So 3, 5 is, you kind of got to guess, right? And then 1, 8 would be right there, right? Now here's my question. Okay, if I connect those, does it create one solid line? No. no. So this is not linear, right? No. Okay, we call it non-linear. Okay, now here's my next question. Is this a function? Yes. Well, what's a function then? How do you know that? Well, how can I say that you? Because I don't know. Are you a sophomore? Are you a freshman? I don't know. I need no. I need no information on you, right? I need no information about you. I need to know your your uh, accrued credits, and I need to know your age, and I need to know all that kind of stuff. And then I need to know the definition of what it means to be a freshman or a sophomore, so I can take your information and compare it to that definition, right? Okay, what about you? So right now, I need to be able to take this information and compare it to the definition of a function and see if this matches up to the definition. It's a relationship that pairs each input right, value is exactly right, one, right, output value. Okay, so input value is x, output value is y. y. So does every x have exactly one y? So this x of 0 has one y of 2, right? This x of 3 has exactly one y of 5, right? But this x of 1 has two y values. It has a, a 4 and an 8. Now, the reason we do this is because there's going to be at some point when I say everybody look at the y value that goes with 1, and we want everybody to be thinking about the exact same y value. Maybe I want everybody to be thinking about 8. Does that make sense? Well, if I have this picture up here, are some of you going to be thinking about 8? Are some of you going to be thinking about 4? And that's a problem, right? We'd have people thinking about two different numbers, and we want to make sure that we're talking about just one, okay? So we need a group of functions, a group of, I guess, relations that we can do that with. And we say we have an x value, and it's going to produce only one y value, okay? Um, so this would not be a function because it violates that. That being said, it would be very difficult for us to write a rule, like we were doing in the beginning of class, like an equation that would produce these ordered pairs. Because we would need an equation that says, okay, when you plug in zero, you get two back. When you plug in one, you get four back, and you get eight back. So you get two answers back when you plug in one. Well, if you think about the way we know our numbers right now, that's going to be hard to do. Okay? Um, so that's not a function. Therefore, we're not going to be able to make a rule up for that. Does that make sense? Okay? 
every line we come across is going to be a function. Okay? Now, what I need you to understand is that every function will not be a line. Okay? It's like saying every, every sophomore is a student, right? But is, is every student a sophomore? No. Okay? So every line is a function, but every function is not necessarily a line. All right? Um, we'll pick up with this stuff on Monday. Uh, what I've done, you guys got 15, 16 minutes here. You can, you can probably finish that homework assignment if you haven't already. But I left it open until Monday. But my hope is that you get it done before you leave class so that you don't have to worry about anything over break. I got it done, but I don't like to study. Do you have similar exercises on it yet? I'd go back and fix them. That'd be a good idea.